Hello everyone. Today we talk about PVT measurement. My name is Dr. Joachim Sunder. I'm responsible for a product application at Gottfried. Welcome to another Gottfried Roundtable. I first like to start with an introduction to PVT measurement. The main properties influencing processing behavior are rheological behavior, thermal properties, and shrinkage, which is measured by the PVT measurement, the measurement of specific volume as a function of pressure and temperature. Shrinkage is important for compression molding, extrusion, fiber spinning, and especially injection molding. And here we have, for example, parameters like holding pressure, injection pressure, melt temperature, mold temperature, influencing the shrinkage. The measurement of PVT is done either isothermal or isobaric. The isothermal measurement, which is the classical measurement, is done at a constant temperature and the pressure is changed. Then the measurement is performed consequently at different temperatures to get the full behavior of shrinkage as a function of pressure and temperature. Then on the other side we have the isobaric measurement, which is the most process-like measurement. Here we have a set a constant pressure. The sample is cooled down from high temperature to a low temperature on a constant cooling rate. And then consequently different pressures are set and different isobars are measured. For PVT testing, we have two different devices. On the one side, we have the option for PVT testing in a capillary ammeter, which allows to have either rheological measurement and also PVT testing, or just a single PVT testing device, the PVT 500. The benefit is the pressure range up to 2,500 bar, we have in both devices, either in the option and also in the PVT 500, the full functionality of a PVT dilatometer. Especially the isobaric measurement allows uh, to generate process data in isobaric measurement, which are process-like data. We have different structures of polymers, which are shown in PVT measurement. One are semicrystalline polymers like polyethylene, polypropylene, polyamide, polyester, peak. Here we have a big transition from the melt phase, which is more or less linear, to the solid phase, also more or less linear. But in between, we have a drastic change of specific volume uh, in just by the crystallization of the polymer. On the other side, the amorphous polymers like polystyrene, polycarbonate, polyatomide, we have just a transition between melt and solid phase. So both the solid and the melt phase is, shows a linear behavior and in between we just have a change of the slope of the isobars. Thank you for your attention. Stay tuned for watching our next episode of Gretford Roundtable. Have a nice day.